Hi everyone, so my name is Emily. Um, this is my last year of my Bachelor of Arts at Concordia. I am a drama major and I have three degrees in makeup artistry. So in part of my final project for my degree, I am gonna be doing some research based on makeup. Um, we're gonna start with the 1920s. Um, something really important to remember about this decade is that makeup in this era was a bit extravagant. So I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on how to do a basic 1920s face and we'll get right back to it. Okay, so if we're gonna start with our base, which is what I normally start with. So I'm gonna use just a regular foundation that I normally use. Plus I'm gonna drum out some of this white and mix it. And so with the 1920s, the complexions were not great since it was kind of the first decade that any complexion powder kind of product was starting to come out. So everyone looked a little bit lighter than the, what they were supposed to be. And I mean, that wasn't necessarily great, but I'm gonna start with that step and then I'll get back to you once my base is done. Okay, so now you can see on my palette, I've got my foundation as well as my white cream. I would never recommend mixing a white powder with foundation, it's just gonna look chalky, which I mean, fit for the times, but if you're gonna be using this on stage, please God, never do that. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my color mixed together and I'm gonna go in with just a disposable sponge. If you're gonna be applying this on other people, you definitely want a disposable sponge, but since I'm only doing it on myself, I'm probably gonna use my sponge. <laughs> So something I'm starting to do here is I'm trying to neutralize my eyebrows. Um, the 1920s had very, very dark, um, thin eyebrows. Even though I'm blonde, you still would do dark eyebrows, which not gonna lie, don't really find an attractive look, but it's historically accurate. So I'm taking my base and just trying to neutralize my brows a little bit. And I will come back and show you how we're gonna do that. So another important part about the 1920s is that everyone looked a little cakey. So in order to do that, one must do powder. So I'm just going in with a translucent powder because that is all I own. Because in 2021, translucent powder seems to be the thing. But as I will show you in my next videos, that um, tinted powder is a huge thing for some women. And it was kind of really big in the 20s. But I'm still going to get the look of the cakiness with a translucent powder. And this is especially important if you're doing any stage production, because we all know that the lights on any stage are brutal and they're not the most flattering for anyone. You could be a Victoria's Secret model and walk on the stage with your makeup and look a little shiny or just not cute. So that's why powder is important and why I tend to go to translucent. But with this look, tinted is okay. So now what I'm trying to do here is I'm just going to try and brush my brows as flat as possible because I'm trying to hide them. And I'm very lucky because I am blonde and don't have much eyebrows. But if you're dealing with someone who has very thick eyebrows, you're going to want to go in with a spirit gum and I will show you how to do that. Okay, so my brows are brushed as flat as they're going to get to my head. We're trying to like, especially on this part of the brow right here, people tend to have texture because it's the thicker part of the brow. So where you're gonna wanna brush it up and make it as flat as possible. And you look a little crazy, but get back to me, it's only getting worse. <laughs> okay, so since we're in the middle of a pandemic when I'm filming this, and honestly, I don't know who goes out and buys Spiracum all the time, I'm taking a clear brow gel. Um, the one I'm using is the Anastasia Beverly Hills, just it's rubbed off. As you can see, I really like it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to spoolie through my brows and make it as flat to my skin as possible. And it's okay if you start to get some lift from the foundation, it's going to happen. And I'll show you how we're going to fix that afterwards. So if you're having a trouble getting them flat, something I sometimes do is take just a Q-tip and kind of roll it Make sure everything's flat because it a good and bad thing about the spoolies is they tend to lift the brows so that's not what we want this time 
Okay, so um, now that my brows are flat to my face, I'm gonna go in with the translucent powder. And this is when it's important that it is translucent because um, we're just trying to smooth it. Okay, so as you can see, I'm looking a little insane, but what we're trying to do is mat down the shininess of the clear brow gel or the spirit gum or whatever you plan on using. I would not recommend glue. That seems to be a thing that is happening on social media these days. And I almost cried when I saw that. So please God, don't do that. Okay, so now I am brushing off the translucent powder. As you can see, it's pretty gone. My brows are very flat to my head and I look a little crazy, but now we're gonna go in and like I said, just making it worse. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to take this beard neutralizer from Ben Nye. Um, I purchased one for the school, actually. There should be one in the kit. If it's not there, I deeply apologize. But basically what it is, is it's like a rusty kind of cream powder. Cream powder, I'm sorry, a rusty kind of cream. And what you're doing is neutralizing the dark kind of bluey undertones of your brows. Because a lot of people have blue in their brows. Um, honestly, I don't know anyone who doesn't. So I'm just going to take a q-tip and kind of go over the really dark spots and then I'll get back to you with the next step. Okay, so now I got my cheetah brows, which is a very attractive look and I'm planning on leaving the house like this. Um, and now I'm going to go in with my regular concealer and this one is actually amazing. It's expensive, so I mean, don't know that the Q-drama department is going to be going out for this, but it is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. You can only get it in the States or get it online, but because I am that person, I have it. But honestly, any like cream-based concealer, anything that comes in a pot like this is typically more pigmented than like anything with a wand. Tarte just happens to be a bit different. I love it, but again, I would go, honestly, you can get from NYX or e.l.f. or anything that's in a pot, very, very pigmented. And that's what you're gonna want for this. Okay, so I'm just blending this out. And obviously women in the 1920s would never have to do this because they would sculpt their brows very, very thin, which I'm trying to do a bit with the concealer. And the whole goal of the 19, hi, my dog is here, she's helping. Um, the whole goal of the makeup in the 1920s is a very thin, long, sad looking brow. Don't know why, but that was the thing. And apparently Bella thinks so as well. Okay, so it's blended out. Um, obviously, you're not trying to get rid of the brows. There are ways to do that, but I'm not going to take scar wax and do it. It's a lot of work, and especially for just like if you're doing a stage production, you can't tell. This is going to be blocked pretty damn well. I mean, drag queens or like people who block their brows for aesthetic reasons tend to do purple glue or um, scar wax. I think it always doesn't look realistic but again this is a very easy way of doing it so now I'm going to go in and we're going to draw in that brow very very dark and thin okay so to do this I'm literally just using a black eyeliner pencil I know it's a little crazy but that's what we're going to do so for this you really don't need an expensive brow pencil literally I'm pretty sure I got this one for like two dollars at shoppers drug mart so I'm kind of just following the art of my natural brow but we're going to lose it when we get up here. So it's very, very, very thin. And you can see, I'm kind of doing that arch up a little bit, like a sad little C. Bring it down. And yes, this looks ridiculous, but this is the look. This is what women did in the 1920s. And it's because makeup was just getting invented in the 1920s. And this was the brow. Um, I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the other side, and then I'll get back to you on how we do the shadow. It's just as funny. Okay, here's the brow look. It's beautiful. Um, if you're going to be doing this on stage, I recommend going over with a black shadow, kind of just to set it, because if you're doing whatever and you go like this, this is going to slide off, and that's just going to be crazy. So I've already done this, but a simple black shadow would work great. Okay, so for the brows, I'm sorry, for the shadow, the shape was really weird. It was kind of like a, I'm just going to trace it with my brush right here, literally a C shape, like a weird C shape and the color very, very, very dark. So I'm going to be going in with this super dark color right here from SST Cosmetics. I got this in my kit. Don't know where you can buy it, but like I said, 
dark color. We're just going to rock out that shape and then I'll get back to you when that's done. Okay, so as you can see, I've kind of done the shape on this side, but what I'm doing is I'm taking my dark color and I'm just doing a windshield wiper motion through my crease, kind of doing a C shape. So the big shape of the 1920s eye was big and round. Okay, so I got my shape. It's looking very round. Um, a really popular color for the 20s was green, emerald green. So now what I'm going to go in and do is take an emerald green and go over the lid. Honestly, women in the 1920s only did two different colors at most. It, like a liner wasn't a thing. No, like lower lid shadow. It was very, very basic, but bold. Okay, so the green I'm going to use is this green right here from the Pat McGrath Mothership palette. Um, you really can use any green, any kind of gray, greeny, blue. That was kind of the look for the 20s. So I'm just going to pack it on like a flat doe foot brush and just pack it on my lid. If you get some fallout, that's okay. but tends to happen. So I'm just gonna go in and do the other side. All right, um, now I'm gonna take my big fluffy brush, brush out any of the fallout, and we'll go in with the lashes. Okay, so another important thing about this look is um, the liner. Um, now, typically liner wasn't a very popular thing for women. Um, so what they kind of did was just taking the exact same dark color, just smudging it along the lash line. And I'm going to do that here and get right back to you. Okay. So I have done the dark shadow along my lash line. I used a Q-tip because sometimes that's just easiest. Um, now I'm going to go in with just basic mascara. Literally the mascara I have been using is from L'Oreal. So if I could give you any advice ever, do not spend over $20 on a mascara. It's ridiculous. It all does the same thing. You just got to find a good drugstore one. Okay, and for the mascara, obviously false lashes were not a thing in the 20s, but it is a very wispy, spidery look because actually something they did use in the 20s, just let me see here. So a brush like this, pretty much identical to this, this is what they would use to apply their mascara. And it was like a cake mascara. Um, I used to have some, but it got all dried out. Um, so basically what you would do, take your dark color, spray it, brush it through your lashes. That's what they used to do. So it tended to look a little like clumpy and spidery. So that's what we're going for here. <laughs> okay, so I finished my mascara. Um, what you're looking for is very spidery, top and bottom. It looks pretty good. Again, it would be very different in the 20s. The products would be <laughs> different. Um, now we're going to be moving into the blush. Um, again, super weird, super bold. And I think like this was the thing because like the Great Depression was over and people are like, woo, let's party. So yeah, we'll get back to you with the blush. Okay, so this is the color I'm going to be using. Um, you can use your own discretion depending on like the skin tone of the person that is wearing this look. But because I am pale, I'm using a peachy color. Um, I'm still gonna go in bold with it. Um, this one is Flower Tender from um, ColourPop and Animal Crossing because it's me <laughs> and that's my thing. It's a great, great, great blush, by the way, if you, you want it. So I'm really packing it on my brush, not even gonna tap it off, which is against everything I've ever been taught, but here we go. So the shape we're going for, very, very bold, as you can see. And every time you do blush, regardless of the decade, always go up, please always angle up because it makes your face look slimmer, which for me, is something I'd love. So I'm just gonna repeat this on the other side and I'll get back to you. Okay, so you can see, very bold, very flushed. Um, women didn't really use contour, or highlight. That was not a thing you did in the 20s. Um, I'm not gonna do this because I find it really weird, but um, something women used to do with blush in the 20s was to put it on their knees. To um, simulate that they were very sexually active. Um, you can figure that one out for yourself. This isn't health class, but yeah, that was a thing they would do because you want to look all flushed and doughy. Um, another thing you can do, which I'm just going to do here, 
is take the remnants of the blush that you have left and kind of do it on your forehead. Because again, flushed, you want it to look like you were busy. Um, gonna get back to you with the lip. Okay, so for the lips, the shape, super, super, super unique. So um, it's kind of hard for me to explain. I'm just gonna do it and then show you. But if you take anything else from this, um, lip colors in the 20s, berries, very, 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 or red, like, very bold. You would never see a woman with a nude lip or just a glass. The glass was just invented in the 20s. So <laughs> it was bold. That's the theme of this look. People is bold. Okay, so I should probably mention what product I'm using. Again, I am using the lip crayon from ColourPop and Animal Crossing. And this one is Juicy Apple. Okay, so this is the shape of the 20s. I think it's kind of weird, but cool. Um, so you see here that I didn't do the bottom half of my lip here and here. I look incredibly cakey, but again, that was the look. Um, I usually recommend going in with liner if you're gonna be doing a production. You gotta do it, my friend. Um, yeah, um, I have a couple more things to show you and then we're done this look. Okay, so for the 1920s, makeup was mostly inspired by celebrities and the it girl of the 1920s was my girl, Clara Bow. And she had this signature mole like right here. I just did the beauty mark kind of thing. Um, yeah, so women love to recreate their favorite celebrities. That's kind of the whole theme. So if you look up Clara Bow, any of the famous actresses from the 1920s, they look like this. Okay, so if you're going to be on stage, something you got to do is set it. So what I use personally is the Charlotte Tilbury Party All Night Stay All Day Spray. Again, probably a little extra for Concordia. Um, one that I have left in the kit is the twin of this one, and it is the NYX matte finish. So go in, spray your person, and this is the look. So yeah, um, this is how women would look in the 1920s. A little cray-cray, but hey, you know, times were different. I feel like I'm ready to go dance and meet Mr. Gatsby. I mean, I'd be down if it was Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs>